on to the adventure and put my on W four C Y three. Wake up, America! It's time for the adventures of Hype Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Hype Man. Pipe Man here on the Adventures of Pipe Man W4CY Radio, and I'm very excited about our next guest who has some killer stuff we're going to talk about, including like this cool like rock opera thing. And I mean, I I love him anyway, but this makes it even better. So let's welcome to the show Aldo Nova. How are you? Hey, how are you, man? Hey, listen, let me ask you a question. How did you get the nickname of the Pipe Man? Okay, so a lot of people think it has to do with other things, but my last name is Piper. <laughs> <laughs> my last oh, name's yeah? Piper, so it just came naturally. It happened it happened before I was in radio. Like I've had it for years and then once I started doing radio, it's like, well, that's a good radio moniker. Yeah, it's a good handle, I say that much, you know. Yeah, and nowadays everybody thinks it's about smoking a pipe. In fact, I go, <laughs> I do music festivals, and I do interviews, and I had one band actually literally in the interview write a song about me in the interview and <laughs> talk about the pipe man smoking his pipe. <laughs> actually, I never thought that about that at all. I thought it was more about a, a porno actor, you know, the pipe man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That was more what I was imagining. It's like I don't I don't smoke weed, so it doesn't matter. I don't associate. So, <laughs> so you, you know what's either so, one is so funny. You either, know what's so funny, so funny about what you said though is that okay? So how it started getting used in radio because I'm also a motivational speaker too, and one of my radio shows I used to have was a relationship show, and what I did was is I brought on you know three co-hosts. I played myself as a guy that's like the nice guy that gets friend zone. And then I brought on this other guy that was the total player, like net was 40, never had a relationship longer than a year in his life. Doesn't go out on second dates unless he has sex on the first date. So he was like the total opposite. Mm -hmm. And then I had two women, same thing, a conservative housewife type of businesswoman opposed to there was this hot Latina a uh, wild player woman. So we had all the bases covered, but the other guy mm -hmm. at one point in time, he had to leave the show because he was going to do some thing in Peru. So instead of replacing him, I decided that I was going to play both roles on the show. And so <laughs> his role was the pipe man like that. So I, I use this like dual personality and like the pipe man was the the player and dean was the uh the real me and you know what a social <laughs> experiment that has become <laughs> wow do you still do that show or you don't do it anymore i do it as part of my show like i had a bunch of different shows that i all combined in one so when i do my live show it includes that part but it also includes motivational stuff it includes music like it's it's everything wrapped up into one but yeah it's it's pretty funny because my ex-wife called my daughter one time now my daughter was working at the radio station and she goes you know i was listening to your dad on the radio what happened to him i was i was married to him for 12 years he was never that obnoxious he's such a player now and it was so oh, really yeah well, here's the funniest part. Then she tried to reconcile with me because she now thought I was a player. <laughs> really? Yeah. And there and it when, is. And when you were and when you were divorced, the pipe man means that the money flowed through a pipe directly to your ex, right? So yeah, it, it, exactly. Your name, is, your name has multiple, multiple uses. You know that? Oh, of it's course. Not, it's not, it's a multi-dimensional. Uh, 
uh, moniker. It's not uh, one thing. It's uh, fantastic. That's right. And that that <laughs> pipe that the money fo- flows through is a huge pipe that never closes. <laughs> 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 I've been there, seen there, done that. You know, it's like so. Uh, Luckily, now I'm happily, happily married. So it's like I it love really it. Really works out at the end. Yeah, I've been I've been divorced twice. I say third time's a charm. Why would you possibly get married after the first divorce? Why do people take that second chance? I mean, they expect. Uh, isn't insanity the, the definition of insanity? Said doing the same thing over and over hoping that it's going to have a different outcome. That's, yeah. that's the definition of insanity. So, I it, mean, you know, it's like you get married, you get married, get married again. Some people get married four or five times. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, at least, you know, so. it's so funny you use that, uh, that saying, too, because the kid's mother, when we were getting divorced, something came up because I used to use that line all the time. And she thought I actually made, that was like my line. I'm like, no, that came from Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you want to ask me some questions about what I'm doing? Actually, these days, not that I mind. I could go on like about social stuff and whatever you want. I'm not like, I'm multidimensional. I don't just like do one thing. I don't just talk about music all the time, you know. Music is something I do. It's in my blood. It's a passion. But, you know, I can go out and talk about, you know, politics I stay away from, you know, because it's like kind of a very touchy subject. But, you know, I'll talk about anything else. And, you know, yeah, there's no reason to talk about talk politics to- here. We're about, you know, everybody being united in the name of music. And, yes, the next thing I was going to ask you is tell me about the life and times of Eddie Gage. Okay. The Life and Times of Eddie Gage is um, based on two things. It's based, uh, the physical part of it is based on me and my life pretty much, and the dates coincide. The guy got signed in June of uh, 1981. His record comes out April 1st, uh, becomes a big star. Uh, three months later, is like a uh, plays in front of, like uh, when he gets signed, the song Hey Life Daddy, and that's, uh, the record example, uh, record company executives. So, uh, but it also has, you know, the, um, uh, it's also based in theology and stuff like that. It's also based on theology and maybe, uh, mysticism. So, uh, the record company guy's name is Andy Christos. So if you, Christos means, uh, Christ in, in Greek. And so if you read it fast with Antichrist. So if you read the lyrics to like that, you realize that it's, it's that according to scriptures, like identical. I mean, the, the description is that. So, so to Eddie, at a certain point, it becomes that. So then, for fear of mind, he's uh, live in front of ten thousand people because, like it says, in the, the, he's he's become a big star. So he's playing live in front of uh, ten thousand people. The following song, uh, "Follow the Road," is uh, his uh, girlfriend and his childhood sweetheart. Uh, Leaves him after he finds out that he's been, you know, unfaithful because you're caught up in the, uh, the family life and the, the rock, rock and roll lifestyle. King of Deceit, his name is M. F. Sophocles, and he's the one that can. He was the CEO of the company that signed him, and he wants to have it just like this guy corrupt him. Now, if you read the name M. F. Sophocles, if you read it fast, it's M. F. Sophocles. So. That's another moniker for you know the the devil or whatever you know. So if you read the lyrics, it's uh, literally a description of himself as a liar, a thief, and whatever. So everything is everything is in the lyrics. The story, the physical side of it, is me, and you can follow me down the line. And then you have to read the lyrics. You know, the lyrics are really important in the story, and then you figure it out. But in the album jacket, it, there's actually a um, uh, uh, the, the album jacket is is like beautiful six page CD, and inside there's a sixteen page booklet. And in the sixteen page booklet, there's seven pa- pages complete of liner notes uh, that I wrote by hand. And the liner notes include anything from my philosophy to my career, the uh, the outline of what brought me here, what made me go uh, disappear. Um, actually, even all the way down to my musical equipment down to the microphone that I used to make this album. Um, uh, the lyrics, it also includes a small synopsis 
and the character, uh, the, the scene and each character, and then you read, and then the lyrics. So it's a multi-dimensional, uh, it's a immerse, immersive uh, uh, project. In other words, uh, you read the scene, you put on the disc, you have the lyrics, and you read the, di- the lyrics as the uh, as the record goes on by with each song, and you pretty much place yourself as to where you're going and know where you're going. So. And you know what I love about all that? That was the thing I loved to begin with when I saw about this because, listen, I miss the old days where an album was an experience. You know, I used to, mm-hmm. I remember sitting out on my balcony and I would get a new album and I would besides listening to it from cover to cover over and over again, I would study every bit of the artwork, the li- uh, the lyrics, the liner notes, the images, the graphics. Like it was, and I was always so excited when there was an album that had like a booklet in it or, or, or like just more content and artistry in it. And that's exactly what this is. And I think kids today are missing that in music. Exactly. That's why I'm extremely old school. Don't forget, I've been in the business 45 years. I grew up in 1956. Uh, my uh, incredible amount of musical vocabulary. I mean, I grew up uh, playing rock, being influenced by Hendrix and all that. Because in the 70s, there was, uh, what's missing today is that there's no idols. When we were young or when I was young, I mean, there was like a Hendrix, there was like a Jeff Beck, uh, uh, and Eric Clapton, there was a David Bowie, there was, all these guys were stars. So I wanted to emulate being one of them. Um, and, you know, that's, that was what my career was. And just like you, I loved to, I mean, when I was, when I was young, I was, I bought Jimi Hendrix band of Gypsies when it came out. So that for me, it's not something that I could, that I, I can go back and listen to and say, wow, this is cool. This is what I would, this is what I was, I, you know, it was the, the record of the week and that her liner notes, the pictures, double album. And so I can tell you from the liner notes still today, who played what, where, won, who mastered it, who engineered it, who did, uh, who produced it. Uh, so that was the fun of doing that. It was, it was, as much fun to listen to the record as it was reading the liner notes because you listen to the music and then while the music is going and you're tripping out, well, you're reading the liner notes. So that, that didn't exist anymore. You, no matter how much money people have and the big stars have, they don't do it. And, you know, with my records, that uh, it cost me almost $4 more per CD to produce a six-pack uh album cover as uh, sleeves and with reloaded it's a it's a six panel but has three cbs but i make less money but i think that in the long run people appreciate the fact that i do quality work and so i make less money but and it works that way yeah so well that's because you care about the outcome board. You care about the outcome. You care about the whole thing. To me, it's a it's a whole experience of art. It's not just the music itself. It, and I think it's so important. And yes, like you, I'm old school because, listen, I talk about it now, referencing what you were saying. You know, you had everybody that you mentioned was not only well-known, but just a great musician. And I think musicianship is something that, I don't know. It, it's been missing for a long time. There are some bands I've been interviewing that's coming back, but like the whole idea of eliminating parts of songs because it's too long or because it's people don't have the attention span for it. You know, I, I think that was some of what was great about songs is you could get lost in the song. Well, the, the problem with that is that uh, people are controlled by the standard of your record industry. A record company uh, won't, won't let you put a song out that's not a single or won't let you put an eight-minute song in it. They won't let you put a three, like on Reloaded, it's a three-CD set. <clears throat> and that's completely immersive because one CD is the songs that are complete and they're old 
they're all my be- better known hits like uh, uh, Blood on the Bricks, Monkey on Your Back, Fooling Yourself Under the Gun, Ball and Chain, Paradise, uh, uh, Modern World, Fantasy. Uh, and so all these songs that people know, but they're like turbocharged. They're not like the same versions. So, so disc one is that, those turbocharged versions. Disc two is all the turbocharged versions, but with no lead vocal. So anybody can karaoke to me, but with me as the backing band. And disc three is all the songs, but with no lead guitar. So if somebody can either play my songs the way that I played them, or can just let loose you know, and, and learn how to play their own style. So that's something that a record company will never, ever, ever do. The fact that they release a record with like no vocals on it is unheard of. They don't want to spend the money. Uh, whereas I don't care. I'm not tied to a record company. I own everything. There you, you know, go. After 40 years, 42 years of being screwed, uh, I know better. So. Well, there you go. And I do love that concept of Reloaded with you have the no vocals and then you have a uh, no lead guitar and you know it, i think it's i think it's the best way to learn how to play guitar or to sing or anything when you're experiencing it like that you know i, I think you're just helping future musicians and future artists in my opinion yeah that's my thing if i could just get one guy out of a thousand let's say a thousand people hear the record if there's one guy that develops uh, his own style and becomes unique, uh, mission accomplished for me. But everybody can play with me. You can either have the chance to play my solos as is, or you can just doodle around till you get something you like. And the no vocal one is just a lot of fun. And, you know, it's just a riot, especially because I've got uh, the booklet inside with the lyrics. So you can just sing along. There's the booklet. You just, all the lyrics are there. You don't have to go search for them. So, I mean, it's, you know, you can have a party at your house, drink a couple of beers, do whatever, you know, uh, do the pipe thing like you. But in <laughs> one of your monikers, one of your monikers have made the pipe and just sing along and have a party. You know what I mean? There you can just is. buy one record for and invite 10 people. It's like uh, the NFL. It's like the Super Bowl. <laughs> there you go. I, I love it. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know what I love, too, is, okay, so the life and times of Eddie Gage, I mean, you've been working on that since 2008. So you know this final product is absolutely polished, amazing, because you didn't want to just release it just to release it. You wanted to release a work of art. Uh, exactly. But don't forget, the actually, what I release now is a 10-song EP. The actual album, the rock opera, is 25 songs, and it lasts two hours and five minutes. And so I didn't want to, I thought that when I first started doing tests, uh, the 25 songs in two hours and a half took too much effort and too much concentration. So I put out 10 songs that made you realize that it is uh, a, a rock opera because there's a lot of stuff like King of Deceit uh, that is not like regular rock record. There's, you know, a Psycho War that's insane instrumental with just like shredding guitar and heavy songs and great ballads and uh, Say a Little Prayer, which is eight minutes long, where I even rap. So, uh, you know. I love it. So it's, it's a different, yeah, I mean, it's just a bunch of different things. So, but it also gives you the chance it, with the synopsis I give you, it gives you a chance that you can follow along. But if you really want to hear the full, full story and every detail, uh, it's 25 songs and you don't get bored. Just like one better than the other. But like I said, I took, you know, from 2008 to now, you know, I wrote a lot of songs. I scrapped a lot of songs and did it. And I didn't flinch. I didn't, I didn't skimp out on the, uh, the production values or anything. And, even the mastery is done by a living legend, Bob Luck. I mean, so, uh, you know, I, me and Bob are go back 40 years. So Bob's just like a fan, like I'm a fan of his. And, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I went for the best. Everything is the best of the best of the best. So I love it. And I love at least, it. At least in my opinion. I think, it, <laughs> I think it's the best of the best. I love the music. I love what you're doing. I love what you're all about. 
tell everybody how they can connect with you and how they can get the new albums and merch or anything else? Well, I have a website. To start. They, can, they can connect with me anywhere. They can message me on my fan page. I always answer my messages. And on the fan page, it gives you my email. But my website is under construction. And so, uh, you know, the website being under construction, that's where you're going to be able to buy my merch uh, for now. And, you know, sign copies of the album, and the album will be cheaper there. And uh, my merch looks amazing because the covers look, uh, look really good. And just, you know, graphic arts are really... If you see the covers, the graphic art is really, really amazing. Plus, I'm also going to put out uh, music uh, of the outtakes. I call it uh, short stories of songs uh, that are just three songs and three songs that tell short stories. And the songs that I had on my drive that weren't, didn't fit on Eddie Gage, which is great songs. And I'm also putting out an instrumental record called... Uh, uh, sonic hallucinations which is like completely off the wall instrumental so uh, this year I'm putting out a lot of stuff I mean a lot of people thought oh he's been doing only the other gauge for the last uh, you know 33 years but uh, I've got a lot of stuff so this year I'm just going to flood the market nah. you won't be able to get away from me <laughs> I love it I, I, it makes me happy I love the music and I thank you for bringing us so much music over 40 years and and especially now when we need it most and thank you for being on the adventures of pipe man thanks pipe man <laughs> okay bye it was great talking to you it was great talking to the fans out there so Won't you lie to me? I'm hey there this is Aldo Nova and you're listening to the pipe man on w4cy radio keep tuned in and be proud Thank you for listening to the Adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY Radio.